Well, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this episode, I'm going to be working on making the oak flooring for the upstairs living room, dining room area. And well, let me take you quickly into the next room. I've been in here for a few days starting to mill up the oak flooring, the red oak flooring for our house. So this is half of the pile. I've already gone through just about half of the pile already. It's quarter sawn red oak, stuff that I sawed uh, about two years ago. It's just over, I don't know if you can see me, it's just over about three quarters of an inch thick. So I want to get it all down to the same thickness. So I'm running it through the planer to get it all down to a consistent thickness of three quarters of an inch. And uh, I don't know, I was gonna say something that I forgot. Oh, well, every time I have to handle this stuff, it gets smaller and smaller. You know, it was sawn at an inch, and then it's been planed, turned into shavings. It's going back through here, it's getting smaller. And then from there, I run it through the, uh, I, I, since it's none of it straight, or very few of it, I have to cut it into chunks on the table, on the chop saw. Run it through the joiner, which makes it smaller, and then um, run it through the table saw to get its final width, which makes it even smaller. Uh, and then I run it through the shaper, which makes it even smaller. So it's consistently getting smaller and smaller. Oh well, you got That's where you get for trying to get straight stuff out of uh, trees. I'm ripping it all to several different widths so I can get the most uh, volume out of it. I've got, I don't know, probably six different widths and I'm just gonna mix and match them in the floor and it'll look fine. So the shaper is set up currently to uh, put on the tongue. So I've got that all and what I've done is I've uh, marked all the the best sides with an X so that they're all consistent so that I don't run the tongue up the this way and then flip it over mistakenly when I do the groove. So all the tongues on this batch have been done. I'm gonna change the shaper over with the other cutter and do the groove on the other side. So it's all red oak and it's all been quarter sawn. And basically what that's giving you is uh, a vertical grain on uh, on these pieces now these are about I would say I don't know between 80 and 90 percent of them are true quarter sawn but there are some in here that um, I can't see if I can find any like this one here can you see it it's not true quarter sawn but it's close so the reason why I've gone to the extent of sawing uh, quarter sawn oak here is because it's much more stable in this direction. It won't shrink and swell in this direction very much. It will shrink and swell in this direction, but I don't care about that. I don't want any uh, as few gaps between the boards as possible. And they're also much prettier to look at. The grain pattern is really interesting and uh yeah so that's what i'm up against let's try these so they're even on the top surface which is uh important for the sanding and you see the tongue and the groove together here and it has a nice look to it i think better much better look than uh, flat sawn stuff. So you can see the grain is all almost all vertical. So That's what I'm doing. I'm, I ran a, <clears throat> the first half of the stuff Through the shaper already to get the tongue uh, I've got the shaper set up uh, To cut the groove and I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna cut the grooves and I'm going to Cut all of the ends square. I try to do as much work as I can here in the shop 
So when it comes time to lay the floor, they'll hopefully will just go bing, bing, bing right in place. All right, that's enough yip yapping. Let's get to work. Hopefully you can see that. So that is about half, not quite half, I don't think, of the flooring all made up. <clears throat> and it's all stacked in different sizes. And the next step is I'm going to go put the forks on the tractor and bring all of this up into the house and sticker it and leave it for a month before I install it. So I get that done today. It's actually pretty warm. It's, it might even get to 20. And then uh, later today, I'll come down and start on the second half of that flooring. All right, stick around. Excuse me, it's Saturday morning and I'm back down in the shop uh, working on the oak flooring. And uh, let's go in here. You can see the pile's gone. Uh, well, it actually hasn't disappeared. It's uh, all moved from here. It's all been planed. And I got it all. It's This pile is all ready to be ripped to the correct widths. It's all been jointed. And... You can see um, the result of joining all that stuff yesterday. And this stuff here has all been ripped to the correct widths and is ready. Um, there you go. Now you can see it. This stuff here is ready to go through the shaper for the first time for to do the, uh, why don't I know what it's set up for the tongue or the groove. Anyways, uh, that's a solid pile, and that pile there is also solid. So there's, and along with the stuff that you've already moved up to the house, I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to do the floor up there. But so I'm going to get started this morning. Uh, I just came in, started the fire in the wood stove, uh, turn on the electricity here, and we'll get I'll get set up and start ripping all that stuff to the correct widths. And then I've got to take some time and uh, mess with the shaper a little bit. It, and then uh, I can start doing the final two steps is putting on the tongue and groove and get the stuff out of my shop finally. And I'll have some space <laughs> back in here 
and get this stuff uh, acclimating in the house. So I'm gonna get to it. Hopefully it's gonna warm up a little bit today. All right, about two and a half hours later, I end up with that pile of uh, material. That's all, so I've gone through the all of the pile now, and all of that is all um, been jointed and ripped to different widths that I need. So that's all done. And this is the, what's left over. You know, you're gonna end up with waste. Uh, I'm just gonna cut this up into firewood right now and put it in the wood stove. And then get the shaper set up and start running that material through. All right, welcome back to the shop. It's another cold morning. So yesterday I spent uh, about three and a half hours uh, milling this pile and that pile there. And I got all the tongues done. And so this morning I spent some time uh, setting the shaper back up with the other cutter. And you can see I've got, <coughs> it's making the, uh, the tongue. And so I've got it so it's running flush. So next step is probably going to take me another three and a half hours to run that pile and that pile and then... And then I'll be done with the flooring. It's just bring them up to the house and uh, sticker them and leave them for a month. So I'm pretty excited to get this part of the process done. Uh, last night I was doing some calculations in my head. Some, and for each piece here, I've handled it almost 20 times. But by the time of milling it up on the sawmill, so I was sawing it up on the sawmill to stacking it to planing it to joining it ripping it putting the tongue in the groove on and moving it around so each piece has been handled I don't know between 15 and 20 times which I don't know you do the math all right can you see that that's the pile I have left to do uh, there and um I got started with it, and I'm like, uh-oh, we have, Houston, we have a problem. And the problem is, let me get this set up here. The problem is that the tongue, the groove, excuse me. The tongue is no longer where it's supposed to be. It's moved. And that's a problem. That's actually a really big problem because now when you put them together, they're no longer flush on the top. And when I discovered that, I'm like, uh-oh. You know, the groove and the tongue have to be uh, as close as you can so that the, the surfaces are, are flush on the top. And something's making a rattling noise. Anyways, uh, so I did all the grooves and they, the machine ran perfect. They went just as they were supposed to. And I ran all of the tongues on that batch and I kept checking them and they were fine. And then something changed. Something changed here. And I think it was, uh, I hit a knot or something. Uh, there's a couple times where the machine ran into something and and I think that that altered the uh, setting on it so from let's see from here down all of those are wrong and I I can't just run them back through the machine and get them because then they'll be a sixteenth of an inch narrower than everything else in that size so if I had five inch boards, I ran them through once and they, they, and then, uh, you just can't run a, a, a five inch board through twice. Cause then it's becomes uh, just too narrow. So all of those down there, I have to actually re-rip 
down to the next size lower and run them through the machine again. Um, I just can't afford to throw them away. So anyway, I fixed the machine. I set, I got the, the shaper so that it was right back on the, where it's supposed to be. And I started running them and it did it again for no apparent reason. The machine changed. And even though I had everything tight, I don't know what's going on. And finally I had to, I had to go eat lunch and get, get it out of here because I just, I was so frustrated with it. So I have to run the rest of this. The goal is to finish this up today and be done with it. But that means I have to tear into the shaper and try to find, figure out what's going on. Why is it changing? Everything's tight on it. I don't know. Very frustrating. But that's the name of the game. <laughs> When you're running a, such a big lot of wood is to try to keep everything consistent and when it, things keep changing that's a problem because you can't lay the floor down it, it just you won't it won't be right all right i am going to turn the camera off and try to figure out what's going on with the shaper and if i find something i'll tell you but you know how gremlins are all right, I thought you guys might <laughs> want to see what's going wrong with my shaper. Maybe you don't care, but anyway, this is the, this is the spindle. I've got a three quarter inch and a half inch. This is, um, and the spindle fits in this bearing here. And it goes like, I don't know, let me just get it set up here. So it goes in there like that with this threaded rod, threads into there, and it sticks out the bottom down here. And this uh, this spins onto the end to tighten it down in, in place in this bearing. Well, for a year or so, I have not been able to get this out. And I'm like, well, I just really used that size, so it wasn't a big deal. But what I noticed when I looked under and it was making some vibrations and some noises is this was gone. It was fell off and it was down in the shavings inside. And basically what had happened is this whole thing had actually started to lift out. And I'm glad I caught it. And that's why the cutter was not maintaining its right height because there was nothing holding this shaft in place. So I'm glad I took it all apart and um so i got all the parts i'm gonna put it all back together and we'll turn it back on and we'll see if that was really the case um but i just couldn't understand everything was tight couldn't understand why it was the cut on the uh, the cutter was changing heights when everything is locked in place and that's the that's the reason is this is was this was never attached at the bottom holding it down all right, I think I'm gonna put it back together. I'll do a test run and then I've got that much to do left and I'm not gonna do it today. I've just, this is, this has just been too much zapping of my energy. And plus I have to go through here and mess with the ones that are wrong. Anyways, there you have it. I'm gonna put it back together and then we'll, uh, we'll do a test cut. All right, I think we got it figured out. It's running now. And it runs at the same noise level it used to run at. So that vibration has been fixed. And uh, I ran, I started to run one, but I had mistakenly hit the reverse button underneath and it was spinning the wrong way. So <clears throat> this is the uh, sample piece to make sure that they're running right. And when I put them together, they're perfectly flush. So I think the machine's all set. It's all back to normal. And uh, tomorrow I'll deal with that. It's just late in the day and I've had enough wrestling with this machine. So there you go. It's not the, quite the end of the video. I don't know how good the lighting is in here. <clears throat> but yesterday I finished up this pile and that pile over there on the bench, they're all have been 
run through the shaper twice and then the all of the ends have been uh, cut square so hopefully there'll be a lot less cutting up in the house now it's going to rain for the next day and a half so the next time it is sunny out all of this material is going up to the house to get stacked on the other material that's already up there and be left for a month to uh, uh, acclimate so i am thrilled beyond belief to get this stuff done and uh yeah we had some problems along the way i think i've got them mostly figured out i'm sure i'll be back down here to uh mess with something but anyways uh and to wind up this video we'll do a little clip of us bringing it in the house You want me to film you taking off the first load? No. Yeah, go ahead. Except I can't get the door for you. Hello, what a good po All right, uh, this is the end of this video about making the oak flooring. Uh, we've got it all in the house and it's going to sit here for about a month or until I get around to putting it in because I've got projects like uh, finishing the walls in here and then painting them and then trimming out all the windows in here and doing some more tile work. So there's a bunch of projects before flooring will hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you think about subscribing, we're nearing the thousand subscriber mark. So, uh, Help us get there. So, thanks again. All right. Take two. We, you, let's do that again. Because I, I was can moving. Edit no, that out. I know, but I want to have two options. Can you do the whole thing again? Just go. Why not? Just pretend it doesn't bother you. Are we filming? Because your fingers are over the, the lens on the front. <laughs> All right. This is the end of this video. Thanks for watching.